these systems, these volumes are expensive. So how do I as a student or a cinematographer or a videographer or a director with no experience in this space get into a project like this? Today we're showing off virtual production and we're pixel mapping with Unreal Engine on our lights to really deliver that interactive image-based lighting that is often required for virtual production. We wanted to tell a simple scene that takes place in a city. We have an investigative journalist talking to an informant. Virtual production actually is not that old. It's still kind of the Wild West where people are always trying to innovate and trying to find new ways to use the virtual wall and the environment, the LED volume, to really tell the story that you're after. And when you have to make a lot of these post-production decisions that would normally be made, you have to make them in pre-production, right? So you can really help to motivate the lighting because you know exactly what's behind you. You know if there's a green monster or a teal monster or a pink monster, and you can motivate the lighting with that. Where in green screen, you're given references and you're trying to emulate that, but a lot of those decisions might get made later. So what does that mean? So the first part is the LED wall. You have to have a bad team design them. They design that in Unreal to be able to put that on the virtual environment. What we're rocking is a row, Black Pearl 2 version 2 panel. And our conventional lighting is provided by Aperture. This is a light panel focused setup. The reason you would use a Black Pearl 2 version 2 panel is so that your DPs can come in with as many different cameras as possible. Then we have our camera system. What's cool about using an anamorphic lens is it has these very distinct properties to it that if you're shooting on a green screen make it actually more difficult to achieve. But in camera visual effects, ICVFX, when it's on the LED wall, if things are distorted in a way, well, that's kind of how the lens would naturally distort the image if you're shooting on location. And so those aberrations and those things that happen in camera, those end up helping to make the environment feel more real because you're capturing almost the final frame. And that's normally what you're after. Virtual production elements opens up the possibility for shooting more raw inside of the volume. Working with the DP on this project, it was really great to work with him on deciding to use an uncommon lens for virtual production so you can get some of those grittier details that come from shooting a little bit raw, as well as using the right combination of an environment and foreground objects to help sell that illusion as well so that the lighting in the virtual objects and the lighting on the physical objects feels the same so that the environment in camera feels real. You have camera tracking that knows where the camera is so you can control the parallax action that you get on the LED wall. That parallax action and with the moving camera really shows how you're able to capture that to get that believability for your audience. Best of all, the interactive lighting side. We're using over 38 Nova P600Cs in the booth along with a dozen LS600Cs. We employ what's called image-based lighting that is capturing the natural lighting that's happening in your 3D environment. So pixel mapping is the process by which you map a 2D or 3D image to an array of lights. You graph out your lights in a very simple 2D way, and whatever image is rendering behind that part of the graph, you project that into your lights onto your talent. I don't know whether I would ever replace my conventional lighting. I'm really excited to see the lighting manufacturers step into this space. When I talk about a quantum leap forward in video panel technology, I'm talking about taking CRI from 30 to 60 or 30 to 70. Not true lighting replacement. It is something that the industry needs to adapt and expect. So for me, classic cinematography techniques and approaches are hugely influential. The more people in this environment who are capable and equipped, the better it is for us. Reach out to the manufacturers in this space. We bring people in purely for non-commercial educational use. Hugh's goal is to democratize virtual production, make it something that everyone can participate in. And in the process, the way that I like to say is we teach while we work. As technology evolves in virtual production, it will become a new tool in the filmmaker's arsenal to tell their story. Am I gonna shoot this on location? Does this call for green screen or blue screen? Or is it virtual production? As things evolve and push farther and the costs come down, I really think it'll be a new way that filmmakers can address telling their story.